Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Pedal Shift Project. The Pedal Shift Project is a series of conversations, thoughts, and experiments around the bike touring lifestyle. From tips and tricks to ideas on how to ride your ride, let's shrink the world by bike. Show notes and more are at pedalshift.net slash 175, and you can email the show pedalshift at pedalshift.net or call the voicemail hotline 202-930-1109 and check Pedal Shift out on all the socials as well. Hello, everybody. It's Tim Mooney back for the 175th edition of the Pedal Shift Project. This episode, something different. Uh, It's an experiment, and you can tell me whether it was failed or successful. I'm not sure at this point. I just got done recording me walking around my apartment here, getting ready for the ride that I'm literally minutes away from leaving on, and that is for the C&O Towpath, a three-day ride in the teeth of summer. So lots of talk about heat, lots of talk about uh, just getting gear and things like that. Lots of talk about me missing my fan. Trust me, this will all make sense in a little bit. Or it won't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is a good show, but I think it was a fun experiment. Let me know what you think. Um, of course, you can reach the show, pedalshift at pedalshift.net. And well, here's me talking while I pack up as we go along. Hope you enjoy it. All right, everybody. This is going to be, as I mentioned before, a special edition of the Pedal Shift Project. I am going to be packing for my upcoming tour and taking you along for the ride as a part of all of that. Uh, So this is going to be me in a quasi-empty apartment with a few dogs talking to myself, which frankly is pretty much every episode of the Pedal Shift Project as I think of it. So uh, what what I've got is well, let, let me set the table. Of course, for those of you who are, or this is the first time you're listening to the show, I'm going to be going out on the C and O, the Chesapeake and Ohio National Historical Park towpath. I'm going to be taking the train from Washington, D.C., where I live, uh, to Cumberland, Maryland, which is the far side of the trail, and I'm going to take three days and bicycle back. Uh, it is a Sunday. My train leaves in, as I look at my watch, in about Three hours and change, give or take. I have not checked to see if it is on time. It is almost always on time leaving. This is the beginning of a very long route. It starts in D.C. It's the uh, it goes to Chicago. It's the uh, capital. What is it called? It's the capital something. I should probably know that before I start talking about it. But the uh, capital limited. So uh, what I've got is I've got a tried and true pack list, which I sort of modify all the time as I go along. I've got a few ideas on how I'm going to be approaching things uh, for this ride. And I'll talk a little bit about it as we go along. Uh, In the past, I have done these uh, episodes as sort of a kickoff, a little bit more of of a more organized uh, intro to the rides. But for this one, I thought, why don't we just wing it and see how it goes? And uh, you get a little bit more of an idea, maybe a little soundscape of me packing up. So let's sort of do that. I'm standing in front of my closet where most of my gear is. I'm looking right now at a few things that I know I'm not going to need. Um, anything with down in it, <laughs> it's just not going to be necessary. Uh, I'm going to be having a really hot ride. I think I mentioned that. Uh, uh, well, it should go without saying. So the one thing that I know I'm going to be needing is uh, the ability to stay cool. I'm going to need the ability to avoid uh, rain. And that is, those are my, my big, big things. And then just sort of the basics for bike touring beyond that. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to be going with my normal heavy riding setup. And that will be a couple of panniers. And at least one dry bag, I may do two. It just sort of depends on where I end up and how I pack things. The uh, fourth dry bag that I could conceivably bring would hold just my tent, and that would give me more capacity in my two panniers. Um, I think one of my panniers may or may not even have like a little ding in it. I may need to repair that before I go. I am running out of time, so I should probably keep going. So uh, stakes, I often don't stake my tent down, but if there is going to be a big storm and uh, any of these nights... I'll need to stake out my fly a little bit more. That makes things better. I think I am going to bring my hammock, but the question is, do I have my hammock straps? I have one of them, at least. I think I left one of them uh, in a remote uh, spot on the CNO from maybe a week or so ago. And uh, I'll be retrieving that on this ride if that is the case. I uh, was in a wild camping situation there. So we'll just sort of play that out by ear. I did a little bit of shopping ahead of time. And got some food. Hopefully, I don't know if you're hearing my bag crinkling. But some snacks, some batteries for the fan, because I will need that. And uh, some new 
low-profile socks that will be good. I'm going to here to tell you, there's nothing better than putting on brand new socks on a bike tour. There is something about it. It's good anytime, but on a bike tour, holy moly. So my timing was impeccable. I think that I'm going to try to limit the amount of clothes I'm going to bring while I expect fully that the ride is going to be, uh, I'm going to be hot and have very damp clothes at the end of the day. I, I've, I've ridden too many times to fool myself into thinking that I want multiple, multiple changes of clothes. The biggest thing, and I've talked about this many times on the show, so stop me if I'm repeating myself. You can't because the, this is a one-way medium, <laughs> is that I like having a set of clothes that is kept specifically and only for camp and sleeping. I tend to call them sleep clothes, but really it's camp clothes. And then everything else is stuff that I'm going to wear. Now, I've got about three, roughly three days of riding, but really it's going to be four. My intention tonight is to do some riding and start the trail uh, when I've got a little bit, a little bit more um, time in non-sunny, super hot hours. So I'm going to give that a potential whirl uh, and we'll kind of talk more about that as we go along. Now, <clears throat> I'm pulling out right now my what I typically use as my rain pants. And this is a real open question right now. Is do I need rain pants or is it just going to be so... If I get caught in any kind of rain, it's probably going to be such a hot time of it that I may not need rain pants per se. Ah, my bicycle touring wallet. I do like this former sponsor of the show. Uh, let's see. Ah, my little baggie with ibuprofen in it, so that's a good start. I'm uh, going to move that over to kind of a more important table with medications. Um, and the reason why I've got medications is that the other day, this was a weird thing, a mosquito flew in my eye and it got really lodged in there. And I thought this morning... Again, bad timing all around that I might have had uh, developed conjunctivitis or something, you know, something not so good that I'd have to go on uh, oral antibiotics for. So I go to the doctor first thing this morning, and thankfully, luckily, that's not the case. I don't have that. But she gave me a topical antibiotic just to be on the safe side. And I didn't mention that I'm going camping and, you know, whether or not she thought that was an issue at all, and she said, no way. Not a problem. You're hearing me right now zip up my fleece liner, and I think this is just, this is what I'm going to bring um, for my bag. I have a summer weight bag and then this fleece liner. The reason why I think I'm going to bring the fleece liner is when it's hot, I tend to like, I, 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 I tend to feel sticky on my summer bag, and it's just not comfortable. This fleece liner, eh, it, it works out really nicely for me. So I think I'm going to go with that as my uh, sleeping bag. It's also very lightweight and easy to use and all of that. So it'll also pack down very lightly. Um, I'm, so I'm filtering through things here. My closet is a mess of touring stuff because I've been doing some small rides here and there. And the needs that I have had have been very mishmashed and all over the place. I've got a couple of new summer um, uh, shirts from Columbia um, that have been really good. They're, they're basically sun shirts. They're button downs. They are very airy. They are very quick dry. I'm considering bringing them for my ride. All right. Let's pull out the main box. Um, I should mention, and I've, I've mentioned that this is my closet that I'm working out of. I tend to keep my touring gear in one large plastic bin, and I've got another one in an outside hall closet. Our, our storage in this condo is not super awesome, but what it does give me is the ability to have basically a winter and a summer bin. So that's what I'm going to be using. First thing on top, which is going to be critically important, 
is my water bladder. This is the water tank by Platypus. It holds four liters for you metric types or 140 ounces for you, I guess they're called English, which is a weird thing, or non-metric. What I'm doing is I've noticed that there was water in it from my last ride, which was I did not dry out, so I didn't. I threw this back in in a not so smart way. I should have let this fully dry out, which I usually do. The reason why I'm going to bring this is because, and I think I've mentioned this on past shows, the CNO water is there, and I will drink it if I need to. But I tell you what, it the iodine it does not agree well with me. So I am going to pack more weight on this trip than normal. I'm going to have city water as much as I can basically water from real taps, and I'll carry more weight just as a result of it. Uh, got my, basically what will be my toiletries bag, and I will supplement that with my brand new toothbrush. I went to the dentist the other day. Probably more information than I typically give on these, but new toothbrush, new toothpaste. Gotta keep that clean. If only for the breath, right? Um, all right. And from a, a cleanliness perspective, uh, I'm probably going to be using the showers at one of the locations in Hancock. But I'm probably not going to be able to get a shower more than that one time. So that's going to be something to keep in mind. Grab some more shirts. You can tell, it's funny how disorganized I am right now because with it being summer, all of the riding, you know, I go out on one type of ride and I don't put things away the same way that I normally do. And it's just, uh, my stuff is a little spread out right now. I now have my two panniers because at this point in my packing process, I tend to build my packing uh, while I sort of go through my list so that I make sure I don't forget something. So you know, I'm slowly making piles here on the bed of my shirts. Uh, let's see here. I've got another wicking shirt. I am also going through a couple of things here on the laundry side of things. All right, that's that. So, you know, I can have stuff together. It's very unlikely that I'm going to need to have anything warm at the end of any night. It's going to be hot and muggy, so I'm not going to stress too much about that, but bringing warm layers, it just isn't going to be necessary. I mentioned that I'm bringing my hammock, and I've got that in my hands right now. Hammock is not, for me, much of a sleeping type of a thing. It's much more of a, at the end of a long, hot ride, you can really cool down very quickly that way. Now, I'm going to have to hope that I've got another hanging strap, and I think I do in this bin. Uh, I'll, I'll check that out, uh, and I'll let you know, of course, as I'm there. Uh, the setup I have right now, it looks like this was all set up for a totally different type of ride Oh, yes, now I remember. Yes, I, I had set up this. I, I'm looking at this going, wait, this is this was for the Brompton. The other day I was going to be doing a, a series of rides uh, that were surrounding basically my dental appointment and auto repair all at the same time. And as it turned out, um, I didn't need to connect it all by bicycle, which was good and bad. Good in the sense that it was going to be very hot and probably not very comfortable bad, uh, I kind of wanted to ride. <laughs> so I missed out on all of that. But the nice thing is, is that by doing all of this, I've pulled together a lot of my kit. Uh, I'm, I'm just kind of grabbing things right now and saying, oh, okay, well, that can be part of sleep clothes. And that'll, there's some, uh, another pair of socks that I may consider bringing water bottles and sun sleeves. I mean, this is, this actually ended up being kind of helpful because for packing for that day, it ended up working out quite well for me. So now the next question is, do I need all of it? And the answer is absolutely not. It's time to 
grab the things I need, put the things I don't need elsewhere so I don't have to think about them. All right, so where I'm at right now is back to the basics. I'm sort of at the point right now where I should decide whether I'm going to be bringing the fourth dry bag. And I should go through the, 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 the three that I've got that are, that are sort of the classic heavy ride, uh, or semi-heavy. We'll call this semi-heavy. It's two panniers, the Ortley orange panniers that I kind of have worn down so well. And I had mentioned that I thought that I might have had poked a hole in one of them, and I do want to double-check that before I go too much further. This one looks good. The other one, I feel like I had poked... Ah, there it is. Now, the question... There's a... It is dinged. Yes, I am going to have to repair this. Um, so, that's one thing I'm going to pull down is to see if I've got my tenacious tape in my repair kit up here. I think it's actually in the bins. So, that is one extra thing that I wish I didn't have to handle, but I think I'm going to have to. So, two panniers, one of which needs a little bit of repair, will not take very long. A dry bag, and I use the Event style bag, which I think is just fantastic. It's really good for sleep kits. I, I, I really can't recommend them anymore uh, because they, they the air gets pushed out. You can really compress it down. So this is a very, very good bag. And then the final thing is I've got a second Event bag, or I, I've got a larger, uh, very large, uh, it's March Away. It's kind of a no-name brand. That's a dry bag that I use for the tent from time to time. So the question is, do I want to start packing up the tent in, because it's right on top here, I do need to do something with it, or do I want to use the um, one of the panniers? And I think that as of right this moment, I think I may consider going a little on the heavy side, and that would include that extra pannier. So, I shouldn't say pannier, I should say dry bag. <clears throat> That's how I did it for the Cleveland ride, so I certainly am used to it. But I think I'm going to back off. I think that I don't need it. I'm going to put the tent in the bag, that the pannier that requires the repair, because it is less necessary that that one be perfectly, perfectly watertight. I would like it to be. And I, uh, I don't know about all of you uh, who are experienced riders or even inexperienced. I tend to like to pack the t pack my tent bag in a very particular way. I like to do it so that the fly is on the bottom because that's always the last thing that I need to put on. Some people would disagree and say that the, a rain fly can be used for other things like emergency shelters and things like that. Tomorrow I may reconsider. Tonight there's no no rain forecast at all. So I'll put it on the bottom. Tomorrow I may consider putting it on the top because uh, there is a possibility of rain. Next would go the tent itself. And then last but not least, the rain fly. Now I just broke one of my rules and one of my rules is you put in the poles first because it's a little easier to put the poles in. So what I do is I put the poles in with a roll-up back jack. This is the one luxury item. You know, they always talk about sometimes you bring luxury items with you. This is my luxury item. I really enjoy having a back to my chair. And uh, I had it for a concert last night. We went to see uh, Tony Bennett, of all people. The man is 93 years old. I had it at the concert last night, so it was very accessible. So anyways, I was able to get it into the pannier quite easily. The last thing that I tend to put on the very top are a pair of flip-flops. Flip-flops are fantastic at camp. They're great little camp shoes. Um, I like to get out of the shoes that I've been cycling in all day. It's much more comfortable, much more easy to get around, and it's great. So I have, in essence, packed one of my bags already. Having a, a packed it up, I can see that it's a little bit of a gash, so I don't think it's going to be too terrible, and I will uh, be able to put at least a patch on the exterior, and that should be fine.
Next up in my bin right here is the other sleeping bag that I'm not going to be using. This is my summer weight bag. When we get a little bit closer to the fall, I'll burn, you know, a late summer when there's cool nights, I may double up and do the summer bag plus the fleece liner. But for now, I'm not going to do that. And next up, we're starting to get into the sleep kit stuff. So I'll pack that next. Sleep kit, as I mentioned, it goes into one of those event bags. It consists of camp clothes. It consists of anything that I, it, or is sort of necessary for uh, inside the tent, sort of when I'm, I want it sort of all together. And that'll include things like nighttime meds. Um, I've got the eye drops. I'd mentioned that I had that issue with the bug that flew in my eye and I went to the doctor and all that. I don't have conjunctivitis, but she did give me a topical and um, topical antibiotic and also just some eye drops. Um, I feel much better now, which is good because last night was kind of miserable. So next up, I'll put the sleeping bag in there. Now, what I'm going to need to find is my fan and batteries, which also will go in here. And I'm hoping that they're towards the top here. If they are not, that means I'm going to have to go hunting because that was another thing that ended up coming out on another uh, ride. I found my bike lock here. It's a folding bike lock, which is really quite handy. My chain kit for cleaning my chain on the off chance I actually do it. Not going to bring my stove, so I'm not going to bring my stove materials. I will want to bring a spork in case I need that. Oh, here's something that's helpful. A second hammock strap. Different type of strap, one that sort of the old school style that only has a loop on each end, but it will serve its purpose. So now... I am all set with the hammock. This I am noticing just because I'm talking through this is disorganized. It's a, it, it, this entire kind of setup is a very disorganized sort of um, thing for me. And that, is, that, that doesn't, it doesn't surprise me, but it may lead to chaotic listening. So I'm hoping that you all are able to follow along. So I've got some coffees and things like that. I think I'm going to not bring those. I am going to bring one smell-proof bag for food. Zip ties, because you should always bring zip ties. Always helpful. Aha, important headlamp and other various tools. Okay, so we're getting important things in here. Ah, something I haven't thought about. Caffeine pills. Getting away from using those. But... Electrolyte pills. Spork. Now we're cooking with gas. I will put my spork over with food-related stuff. Food with food. Again, I'm using the bed here. I don't think I mentioned that as my sort of organizing thing. The thing that I am missing at the moment that I do really want slash need is my portable battery operated folding fan and I am not seeing it. I, am, I bought batteries specifically for it um, and I know I'm going to need it. have my bar of Castile soap. Peppermint, of course. A 
The reason why the fan is very important is it's the thing that at the end of the day, on a very muggy night, can mean the difference between really settling down and not. Now, last time I went out, I had my kind of, pl well, not my kind of, my plug-in fan, you know, plugs into a standard outlet, and I brought, I used my battery that uh, uh, has a regular 110 outlet. And that worked fine. However, that is not ideal for a multi-day trip because I want to be able to have juice for, well, frankly, more, more activity. So now, you know, I'm in the state where I do truly want to make sure I've got that because if I don't, I'm going to have to travel without a fan. And I have found that given the choice between traveling with a fan and without a fan on hot days, I prefer with fan. And I am striking out. This is a great example of why I tend to like to be more organized with my gear because I strongly prefer to have my stuff together. One of the other things that I'm going to do while we are doing this packing job here, and you are probably slowly learning what not to do, <laughs> is I'm going to run a bit of laundry here because I do like to have a lot of bandanas with me. And I'm just kind of throwing whatever ones I find around into the laundry. Another thing that I just have run into here that I think is helpful on the CNO is, is a collapsible bucket. <clears throat> the pannier trick is good, but um, it's almost more water than I need. And I say the pannier trick, I, I will dump water just over my head at, at the end of a day or in the middle of the day just to cool down, just to get the body temperature down. It's, it can be really, really helpful to do that. Inflatable pillow. I would have been bummed if I didn't have that. It's funny, my... I've gotten a little bit lazy with my packing list. I just say sleep kit. And I don't check off all of the boxes necessarily. And I have in the past forgotten my inflatable pillow. Is it necessary? No. Is it nice? Oh boy, it's nice to have. Yeah, really striking out on this uh, battery-powered fan. And I am now thinking, okay, what to do I bring a, a plug-in one and use my uh, AC battery? I think that that would be a bad idea. I think what I'm just going to have to do is I'm going to have to double down on the notion that I will dump water on my head, take a cool shower, and just hope that um, I can get comfortable. But I also know that Boy, it makes a difference when you have something like that. I'm just trying to also think where that might have been. It's funny, you know, a, an item that is that important to me clearly wasn't important enough for me to keep track of. I'm trying to think, you know, I also had it, you know, recently in some other bags, some other conveyances, and it could be in there, but frankly... I'm sort of running low on time to be able to figure that all out. Another thing that I've been um, finding to be an issue is uh, bungees. I don't know if I've got all of my bungees, and that's going to be an issue for uh, putting down some stuff. Now, the one nice thing is, because I think I've committed now to being uh, in two panniers and just one dry bag, I should have enough bungees for that. I think that'll be all right. So I'm just kind of sort of scanning the bed right now, looking and seeing what I've got. Um, I'm looking over at my rain jacket, and that reminds me that having my rain hood would be good. So let me see if I've got that rolled up in there. I think I do. It's a detachable hood. Yeah, it's in there. This is the type of thing that I'll pack last, largely because... 
it will um, oh, apparently I had quarters. Quarters are handy to have when touring, I find. You know, you'll never know when you'll run into a vending machine. I happen to know where most of the vending machines are on tour. I think I've decided I'm not going to bring the rain pants, but what I am going to do is I've got two um, detachable leg pants that uh, will, I'll probably live in shorts for this, but what I'll do is I'll bring the pant legs for both of them uh, in case I f choose to go to pants either for mosquito purposes or for rain purposes. I, the, this might be the one thing too many. I may not need these, but I'll have them if I, need, if I do. I had mentioned sleep clothes. That's basically a t-shirt and a pair of underwear that I will only wear for sleep. Now things are starting to come together a little bit. I'm like, okay, I've got two pairs of shorts. That should be fine. I'm starting to look at, you know, I've got the, what, what combinations of shirts I'm going to have with sun sleeves. And now I think I'll start that laundry that I mentioned a little while ago. Scintillating radio, I'm sure. Okay. Basically, I think what, what I've got right now is I'm at the point where I have all of the things that I really need. And the question is, okay, if I can find, oh, sunscreen, always handy. That will be good. Throw that over by, I guess, toiletries, but that'll end up probably in a different bag. I think I'm getting to the point right now where I'm just going to start throwing some of the clothing in. Uh, I'm wearing essentially what I'm going to be wearing on the train. I'll probably change. I'm wearing a cotton shirt right now, so I'll change out of that before I start riding. But, you know, the things that I am bringing for clothes that I don't need are going in the bottom of the bag right now. Uh, the other pair of shorts. Uh, I think I'm going to pull out the pairs of underwear that I would like. I tend to wear could have the underwear discussion if you'd like. <laughs> if you'd like. I uh, wear sort of... I sort of. I keep saying sort of as a phrase. I wear synthetics. I know a lot of people swear by wool, but I find the synthetics are more cost-effective. And I will bring three pair. So I have a pair for three days of riding, plus I've got the pair that I only wear for... Um, sleep, and I'm going to be wearing a pair that I'm wearing right now. So overkill, but underwear is one of those things that if you've got an extra dry pair, sound like your mom here, but an extra pair of underwear can really be the difference. You may be wet everywhere else, but I found having an extra pair of dry is good. Also, when I say dry, non-sweaty dry, it, it can really help. The one thing that I'm bringing that is extra for me than normal is I'm bringing a swimsuit for use with those outdoor showers and potentially a dip in the Potomac. I have to check the water quality, see what that's looking like. Um, there have been some very bad algal blooms. And as I put my rain jacket in on top there, um, it, it's, it's no bueno. It's killing dogs and it's toxic for humans. It's really no good. So I do not want to be jumping into anything like that. So. Definitely not jumping in the canal. That is not recommended because that's probably just full of bad news, bears, junk. Um, I'm looking at one shirt. Now I'm looking at sort of my shirt situation. So I'm going to be riding tonight. So I would like to have something that I can wear. I tend to re-wear shirts when I ride. Um, especially the t-shirts. And since it's going to be hot and potential sun exposure, I'm bringing light gray and white. And I think I'm going to be also bringing two sun shirts as well. One that's kind of multicolored. These breathe really well. They are SP have high SPF protections. 
They're quite good. I think I'm going to put the one kind of more of a compression shirt back in the drawer. Again, don't need everything. Uh, I rewear things. Now is a question of what am I going to wear on the train. I think I've decided one of the white shirts along with probably one of my sun shirts. That means that the other sun shirt will go into the bag. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm noticing, oh, this pannier is not super full. That's, that's okay. Um, I'd rather be riding a little bit on the lighter side, but it's also an interesting situation. So I've got to ride to the train. Well, I don't have to ride, but I am riding to the train station. So I have to make sure that I've got all these things together. The other thing that I'm realizing is that I haven't been thinking much about cables for my phones and for other things. So I am now going to remedy that by grabbing some charge cables that I will want and need. I tend to use USB mini and lightning. Those are my two that are necessary. Um, USB mini, of course, is mostly for my headphones and for charging my batteries. And I think I'm using, well, I'm using that right now to charge one of my batteries. Not, not so shockingly. And then the other thing that I'll need is a lightning cable. And the issue with that is we have been going through some lightning cables lately that have been dying on us. And I think that my spare ones are starting to be used throughout the household. So I have to be mindful that I'm not absconding with a lightning cable that Kimberly, my partner, is going to need for her own use. And her phone is funny. It, it, it's very picky. And there are only certain cables that seem to work on her phone, whereas mine seems to be a little more okay with anything. All right, so I found a small USB mini. Another pair of headphones, which will not be helpful to me. So at least I got a USB mini, and I may have to um, test one of the lightning cables that have not worked for her that may have worked for me, because I have run into problems before where... I brought cables, and I think I've done this on recent tours, last couple of, last several tours. I've had to buy more cables on the road because my cables suddenly short out on me. And that, I don't have much opportunity on this trip. My watch just thought I invoked her name, which is funny. Oh, watch, speaking of watch, another charge cable. Sometimes it's, I start thinking that perhaps it's not as worth it to carry all these different devices with these different needs for charging, but. All right, well, I just tested this one cable that Kimberly says wasn't working on her phone. It seems to be working fine on mine, so that's coming with. Okay, so where am I at right now? I am at a point where I am finalizing my pack of my clothing, my extra socks. I've got cycling gloves. I don't tend to use these around town very much, but I do like them while riding, um, so I will make sure that those are sort of more openly available to me. You know, and, and as you start to get down to it, it's like, okay, well, what needs to go in what bag and what doesn't? I, I was starting to mention that I need to ride my bike, so, but once I get there, I need to repack it into another duffel bag for more easy movement. So that's sort of the thing that I'm dealing with right now. Now the question is, I've got these batteries with no fan, so what do I do about that? <laughs> do I bring the batteries? Do I not? Probably leave them. But I'm still not giving up on the whole battery-powered fan situation, but it's something that I need to remember. Um, one thing that I talked about on the last episode was food and uh, packaging. You know, CNO is very much a pack in, pack out kind of situation. Right now, I've got a box of cheese and crackers, which I do not need the box. So my plan is to put all of these into my bag here, my smell-proof bag. Not too much issue with critters on the trail coming after your food, which is surprising to me. I would have thought that there'd be more. But through the years, I've never had an issue. Never even seen a raccoon, if you can believe it. 
Pop-Tarts. I think I even specifically shouted these out on that episode. I am just going to pull the box out. Now, is it possible these are going to get smushed? Absolutely. Do I care? No. So I will recycle these this cardboard. That's the other nice thing I see, you know, here in, at home, this cardboard is recyclable through our municipal waste stream. So I will put that in our box and keep moving. So again, things are all starting to come together. Now I'm going to set these batteries over probably with my, next to my computer. I'm not going to bring a computer on this, although it, a lot depends on whether I'm going to be able to produce this episode. I probably will not. This will probably be done the night before you hear it, even though I'm recording it several days ahead. Spork going into my food bag. And the food bag is going to go in with the clothes. So now it's starting to get a little fuller. Also going in, we've got sunscreen, soap, electrolyte pills. I'm going to actually keep those out because those are going to go in a more accessible bag. Burlier tools and lock are going to go in, I think, with the tents just to keep space. This is when I start getting to the point where I'm like, oh, I keep forgetting where things go and how this is going to all go. But I'm looking at the bed and it's far less cluttered than it was before. I now have my toiletries and my bucket, my water bucket, my water tank which is going to come in very handy. This is something I'm going to need to fill up in Cumberland because tomorrow is going to be an absolute scorcher. And I'm going to want all four liters of this water plus my water bottles, just not only for drinking on the way out tonight, but also for uh, download, you know, tomorrow. Uh, again, I don't have any problem moving to the CNO water when that is all my options are. But I think I don't, I don't mind carrying the extra weight on an already relatively loaded bike so that I can have fresh water. So I am packing on my hammock That goes into the size of about a softball, which may not be helpful for international. Is softball a very big international sport? I don't, I don't know, um, but it's softball size. Maybe it's a little bit bigger than that, but with the straps and everything. And that goes towards the top because that also will often be one of the first things that I pull out. Now tonight, tonight I may, if it's not raining and it's not too buggy, I may just roll out my sleeping pad and sleep under the stars because I expect it to be quite muggy. Pulling my sleeping kit over, pulling, oh, I had not mentioned this, my cooling, Chillet's cooling towel. It's a, a towel that uh, is, does evaporative cooling. I have found it to be quite good. Uh, I'm looking forward to using that. I'm just going to keep that out for now. Um, I, I, I think that that might be something that can be helpful, you know, in lieu of the fan. Now I'm starting to feel like the fan may not be happening and I'll just use this evaporative cooling towel because I do think that that's going to be the difference. So if I can't find that fan when I'm done chatting with you all, that cooling towel is probably going to be the difference. So where am I at right now? I know this is not a terribly visual medium, but I've pulled out everything that I think I need. I will when I'm not chatting with you, mentally go through the whole list of things that I packed up, double check with the uh, packing list that I have over on the computer, maybe try one more time to find that cursed fan that seems to have gone missing, and get dressed and start thinking about uh, going to get 
my dinner. I think I'm going to do a little tried and true subway action. And I think I'm going to get two sandwiches and I'm going to keep, I, I may, <laughs> I thought it was going to have more space, but I, I, depending on how things go, I may bring a nice pack and try to keep that a second sandwich cool uh, for the next uh, roughly 12 hours. Well, I guess it would be, well, from now it would be 24 hours, but from when I get it, it'll be um, closer to 18 to keep it cool. Or I might get something in Cumberland. A lot just sort of depends on how my time is going. Just looking at the time right now, I've been apparently yakking for quite a while. It's now 1.37, and I think I started this a long time ago. So rather than put you through even more stuff, let me just give you kind of a little bit of a wrap-up on my uh, packing and uh, my techniques and stuff like that. I think that one takeaway that I've got from all of this is that staying organized when you unpack, even if it seems like, you know, oh, I'm just going to be going in a couple of days, really important. Because as you've heard, I'm missing something that I really kind of wish I had. That's one big takeaway for me. Number two is having all of your things in one place is a very helpful thing. Even if it's a little bit disorganized, you at least know it's always there, unless you forget to put it in aka my fan. But I was using it in something that was non-bike touring related recently, so that's why it's missing. Um, I think that the other thing is that doing this with extra time to spare, maybe even the night before, is a helpful kind of a thing. Doing it when you've got a lot of space to be able to lay things out, always really helpful. I found that when I do this with other people around, I tend to be more stressed out rather than less stressed out. I don't know why that is, but I'm a little bit more relaxed, especially because I'm talking through this all with you. Um, and last but not least, I, I just think that it's exciting, even though it's, a, it's in a little bit of a stressful place when you're getting the gear together, because you're worried about leaving something behind. And, you know, I've done this enough times that I know that it's like, you know what, I've never been in a situation where I've like, been in a bad place because I've left something behind. It's usually something that's more of, oh, shoot, I wish I had that. But, you know, when it all comes down to everything, the stuff that you really need is you need clothing and you need shelter. And you do you do kind of want to make sure that you've got some food, especially like emergency food or snacks or things like that. That I've got. I've got all of those things. I think I'm in good shape with all of that. The question ends up being, you know, do you have what you need for comfort? Because that can be really important too. So safety, you know, shelter, safety, comfort. Those are the types of things. And you know what? I know I've got all of that. Um, I've got a few special needs right now. The the eye that uh, was injured, is that the right way to put it? Um, but need, needing the eye drops, which I normally don't need. Um, but, you know, I've got that. I've got everything else set. So when all is said and done, having brought you along for this uh, setup, this packing setup, uh, I hope that that's been at least somewhat helpful for this big, long train of thought of me as I've been packing things together. The ride's going to be a lot of fun, I think. I think it's going to be a little bit challenging because it's going to be so hot. The heat index tomorrow is going to be above 100. I don't tend to like riding in that kind of a thing. So my idea is tonight I'm going to try to get some miles in. I'm going to try to reduce the number of miles tomorrow that I need to ride. I'm going to try to get done earlier tomorrow as well. Then it starts to improve, conditions improve a little bit, but I'm going to be having much more of a chance of running into some very serious thunderstorms um, coming Tuesday and Wednesday as I return. Once we get into thunderstorms, then you start to get into a few things. There's a, that water crossing. There's a low-level water crossing, but if it's rained recently and heavily, it could be underwater, so I may have to call an audible there. Uh, number two, the trails get a lot muddier at that point. The one nice thing about the CNO this summer as opposed to last year we have had a fraction of the amount of rain this year. A fr I mean, a real fraction. In fact, I don't think it's really rained heavily in the region for at least a week or two. So that pretends really, really well for having a dry trail. Um, the hardest, worst parts tend to be on the first day of riding, um, basically between ha uh, Cumberland and Hancock coming back towards DC. I think it's gonna be pretty good. Um, it's gonna be hot, it's gonna be muggy, it's gonna be a little uncomfortable. I mean, I love going through the tunnel because it's going to be about 60 degrees in the tunnel. So it's going to be natural air conditioning. I'm going to linger that a bit probably. But I think that'll be good. I'll grab a shower and really cool off in Hancock. And then uh, that for the, that'll be the end of the first night. And of course, you're going to hear all about this in tour journals coming up. If you are a member of the Pedal Shift Society, I remind you, hopefully you've gotten the email by now from me. Uh, with the brand newer new feed, there's already some content on there, and it's got all sorts of stuff. In fact, you've hopefully already started listening to it. In fact, by the time you hear this, 
the tour will be over. So hopefully you got a chance to listen to all of that. If you're interested in stuff like that, if you're interested in more of the bonus type of stuff that comes out in addition to the tour journals, that all ends up on this bonus feed and you can sign up for that over at pedalship.net slash society. So thank you so much for listening. This has been an unusual episode and I hope it's been at least a little bit entertaining and a little bit um, more storytelling and less chaotic than I think it may be, but we'll see when I edit it all together. Thanks so much for joining and I look forward to seeing you all at the live show, which is going to be, if you're listening to this the day it comes out, it's going to be the 30th. The 30th, August 30th, Friday, August 30th, 9 p.m. So hope to see you all there. And as always, we like to close out the show with a special shout out to the Pedal Shift Society. Because of support from listeners like you, Pedal Shift is a weekly bicycle touring podcast with a global community, expanding into live shows, meetups, tour journals, you name it. If you like what you hear, you can support the show for five bucks, two bucks, or even a buck a month. And there's one shot in annual options. If you're not into the whole small monthly thing, check it all out at pedalshift.net slash society onto the society. Kimberly Wilson, Caleb Jenkinson, Cameron Lean, Andrew McGregor, Michael Hart, Keith Nagel, Brock Didis, Thomas Skadow, Marco Lowe, Terrence Manson, Harry Telgatis, Chris Barron, Mark Van Ram, Brad Hipwell, Stuart Buchan, Todd Stutz, Mr. T, Roxy Arning, Nathan Poulton, Stephen Dickerson, Vince LaGreco, Paul Culbertson, Scott Culbertson, Cody Forchinger, Tom Beninati, Greg Braithwaite, Sandy Pizio, Jeff Muster, Seth Pollock, Joseph Quinn, Drew Porter, Byron Patterson, Joachim Robert, Ray Jackson, Jeff Fry, Kenny Mikey, Lisa Hart, John Denkler, Steve Hankel, Miguel Quinones, Alejandro Aviles Reyes, Keith Spangler, Greg Towner, Dan Gephardt, Jody Zoranin, Lucas Barwick, Michael Baker, Brian Bechtal, Reinhardt Biggle, Greg Middlemas, Connie Moore, William Goffman, Brian Benton, Joan Churchill, Mike Bender, Rick Weinberg, Billy Crafton, Gary Matushak, Greg Latoile Lopez, James Sloan, Jonathan Dillard, John Funk, Tom Bilch, Ronald Paroli, Dave Roll, and new to the society, Brian Hafner and Misha LeBlanc. And thanks to all past and anonymous members for helping make this show happen. Thank you for joining. You can find Pedal Shift at pedalshift.net for more great bicycle touring content. You can hear the Pedal Shift Project through Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Opening music courtesy of Jason Kent off his self-titled album. The track is called America. Check out his band Sunfield's latest release, Mono Mono, wherever cool music is available. 